agenda item 6B, and this is REZ 2024-15, Lots Wind LTD, Lock Morrill Road, and Carroll Alder Road. This involves 62 acres. It is currently RA and requested for R1 and RA, and it will be certainly well accepted. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, Commissioner, this request involves the 62 acres highlighted here. In the middle, it encompasses two parcels, which total roughly 150 acres, more or less. But again, they are only requesting the 62 acres of that be requested for R1 zoning. Remove the R1 zoning to the north, the R10, which is actually size approximately <coughs> R1 lots. So just consideration there. You also know that the R1 zoning is a little to the south. But again, these are the two lots in question. It is within the rural residential character area. It's also within the urban service area, which does recommend for R1 zoning. And you will note that this property is does contain some wetlands as well as a groundwater recharge area, requiring that the minimum lot size be 1.25 acres in order to accommodate said well and septic. So again, here is that 62 acres more or less laid out with the conceptual site plan. This is currently showing approximately 41 lots. Um, as you just mentioned, you will be see going forward this connection to Buckeye Drive. Um, while it shows proposed, it is no longer a requirement. Shown just again as a conceptual layout here. So, based on the TRC's analysis, looking at the neighboring land uses, lot sizes, lack of available utilities, and the groundwater recharge area, the staff recommended R1 zoning as depicted on the exhibit here, with the remainder of track two depicted there to remain RA. At the planning commission meeting, several of the neighbors voiced concerns about potential traffic from that proposed interconnection. I was just talking about potential for stormwater pollution runoff, as well as potential trespassing. Um, from the adjoining properties. And again, they ultimately voted 8 0 to recommend approval of the request for R1 and RA zone. Any questions for Mr. Dillon? Potential trespassing is a first for me. Concerns about these residents trespassing on adjacent neighbors? That would be concerning. Young boys being young boys. <laughs> Probably just play a little. in regards to the layout. The layout itself don't have to be, it's not like something in stone. I'm just concerned about the wetlands and the, and the actual lots that I see you know, within the wetlands. I know you're saying we don't want to create another check. But this is not a PD, so it would not help to that design. No, sir, they are not. This is just a conceptual layout based on the uh, Eagle and DC, which are only required 24 lots and two points of ingress and egress. This has not gone through official staff review or evaluation. Wetlands there have not been evaluated or delineated, I believe, um, by an engineer. And if they were proposed to build it in any way, shape, form, that would have to come from the Army Corps of Engineers. So this is just a conceptual layout of what a 1.25 acre lot subdivision on 62 acres could more or less look like. I believe this layout will change somewhat uh, to, again, to mitigate some of those wetlands. Um, and the public health, having well and septic regulations, would have to review this as well. So I think you have a Generally good idea of a layout, but this is not a final binding layout. Okay. Any other questions? All right. We'll move into the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. My name is Bruce Smith. I live at 2941 Lock Road. I actually live on property to the south and to the east of this is uh, Lock Laurel. Uh, this old uh, family property, been in the family since the late 1800s, and for the most part has remained natural. We've intentionally kept it very natural, uh, a little under 200 acre lake, uh, so there's a, you know, a significant wetland uh, component to the, to the development, uh, or adjacent to the development. I currently live on the property, uh, and I don't necessarily oppose zoning request change, uh, but I would ask the commissioners to consider two conditions to the approval of the zoning change. One, uh, I would ask that they uh, require some form of an environmental impact zone. <coughs> I understand that some developments of a certain size automatically trigger that. I believe this one, I'm not sure it may be under that trigger, so I would just like to, because of the proximity to a significant wetland on our property, like to maybe understand a little bit more about the impact, uh, environmental impact of the development. So I'd like to ask the commissioners to possibly put a condition on the approval to require some form of an environmental impact study. And then the second
second condition that I had requested at the commission meeting was for the developer to add a fence to the property line adjacent to the lot bulb property. Again, it's uh, we keep uh, our property very natural. It is desirable for maybe possibly young kids to come and play on it. I'm a little concerned about liability. Uh, we have a lot of wild animals on the property, uh, a lot of water, uh, and just would like to maybe see a fence there just to protect some of the young kids that may attempt to wander onto our property. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Uh, Mickey Burns. Uh, I live at 3010 La Flora Road. I also live on the lake, like Mr. Smith. And I don't want to repeat you know, what he said, but I do want to underscore what uh, we feel is the need for an environmental impact assessment um, to be conditional on the uh, rezoning approval. Um, it's my understanding that this is typically done whenever a uh, land development project is, is close to a, a large water lot body uh, or wetlands areas. And uh, there's a 170 acre lake, uh, as well as two other wetland areas in that uh, uh, property to be rezoned. So uh, we just ask the commission to please uh, make a condition uh, on the uh, rezoning that an environmental impact assessment be conducted and submitted to the Georgia Environmental uh, Division. Like to speak in opposition, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. David Adams, 2826 Airbnb Drive, and I, my residence is actually on the opposite of where um, the proposed subdivision is going to be. So, I have two concerns. The first concern is there was a proposal that a road be cut from through Buckeye. Asking that you deny that because our subdivision is small, it's got big lots, we don't have um, any sidewalks, and our residents normally walk that neighborhood, so uh, that's going to put a lot of traffic on that road as well as a lot, you know, six or seven more cars each day. So the safety concern and the number of cars are, is what we're mainly concerned about. Second concern, like I said, my, my property actually is on the opposite side, and just like right now, uh, part of it is underwater because there's no water flowing out, and that's into that subdivision because there's a, cold, a small culvert there, and I know some of the residents have been uh, digging it out because we've had some beaver problems, so if the water is still up, and so my concern is if you build houses with, because behind one of the residents that lives on Buckeye, uh, water normally flows into that area, so if you put houses there, I don't know my concern is where is that water going to go, and my answer to that is it's coming back on my property, and uh, uh, that is a, a major concern of mine, so those are the two things that I'm concerned about. Thanks, sir. All right, I'll ask for one more. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Yeah, I would. This will be the last one in opposition. Come forward and state your name and address for the record. Caleb Breed, I live at 2910 Buckeye Drive. Um, I live on the kind of the north side of the proposed new subdivision. And um, just to reiterate what uh, David said, what's uh, a big concern of mine is the traffic on Buckeye Drive. Um, 
something that uh, a parent wants to have more water when you're pushing up to the house with uh, the children are going to be for sale. Thanks, so. All right, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in support of this request? Anyone that would like to speak, speak in support? Chairman, I make the motion that we approve this application of request, excluding Buckeye Drive as a point of ingress and egress. Okay. Approve it as presented. Okay. All right, we have a motion then to approve as presented with the with the uh, exclusion of the tie-in to Buckeye Drive. Yes, sir. We eliminate that. Yes, sir. Second. All right, we have that as a motion. Do I give a second? Have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, signify by aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed, like sign. Uh -huh. All right, that's four to one. Okay. Motion carries. All right, we'll move on.